east of Africa, between the Rift Valley and Lake Victoria, a high plateau covering an area of 30,000 square kilometers is the scene of one of the most spectacular migrations on Earth. Every year, hundreds of thousands of news follow the rains in search of pasture, in a cyclical migration which marks the lives of both plants and animals in the regions they cross. The government of Tanzania, aware of the importance of this migration, decided to give official protection to 17,000 square kilometers of this region. And so the Serengeti National Park was born. The Serengeti National Park is a vast savanna of grass with occasional isolated patches of trees and bushes. Both the amount of rainfall and the numbers of news, zebras and gazelles vary enormously according to the seasons, and the vegetation is very resistant to grazing. Some types of grass can spring up just an hour or so after the first shower. The news don't stay long in one place. The enormous herds rapidly devour all the pasture, and so they have to move on, followed by other herbivores who share the same diet. Every year they cover about 3,000 kilometers in their constant wanderings, which take them to the edges of the park, across the border into Kenya, and to the Maasai Mara. A large population also means many deaths, and for some animals that means food. The vultures of the Serengeti eat 11 million kilos of meat every year, which gives us a good idea of the important role they play within the park. A dead zebra is being devoured by the vultures. There is no set feeding order, and whoever gets to eat first will be determined by how hungry and how strong they are. More vultures arrive constantly as they see others descend from the sky. A dead animal is discovered by just one vulture, and in no time hundreds have gathered around. There are six different species of vulture in the Serengeti. The bearded vulture and the white-headed vulture are not only scavengers but also predators and are capable of eating muscle and hard tissue thanks to their powerful beaks. Then they leave way for the white-backed vulture and Rupel's vulture, who with their long featherless necks can reach right down into the entrails. Finally, the hooded vulture and the Egyptian vulture will clear up anything left on the body on the ground. From a great distance, the vultures can be seen landing, and this helps scavengers on the ground find the dead bodies. The vultures are not strong enough to fight the hyenas for food. But they're used to this and simply wait patiently by until the hyenas have eaten their fill, and then again they attack the dead animal. As they wait, other vultures seeing the commotion on the ground fly down to join them. So as the food becomes less, the number of hopeful diners increases. The wait seems never ending, but no one moves. At last the hyenas leave and there is still plenty of meat. 
The vultures again fall on the zebra, and in an instant the lifeless body is covered in a sea of feathers, claws and beaks. <laughs>